Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make a box that will hold a mug. It's a standard size UK mug. I'm, I imagine they're all over the world as well, but in the UK it's quite a common size. I'm going to show you, the mug is already in here, but I can't show you what's on it because it will give it away, but it's a really nice, the way I've done this, I mean the box can be used for whatever you want. You've got a little label tag here, which I'll show you, but you'll see here that it's thread through the lid so you just undo the ribbon and then you'll see it will come off. You can pull it right the way through if you want, but in here, I've got to wrap it in some tissue, is the mug, but I don't want to turn it on its side because it, it has a name on it basically and it's going to give it away. But I'll bring in another mug, and this was one that was kindly made for me by Simone, who's one of our mixed up crafters, and this is what I mean by those standard size mugs. These are really, really common um, shape, and you can find these in you know lots of your homeware stores, and if you do a lot of online personalization and things, this is that's generally the size mug that people will um, you know do them on, and you can see there it fits inside, and you've got a little bit of space to wrap it in some uh, tissue paper. There is a, a, my one that's going in here is actually a little bit taller, than this one so um, and it, you have got room if you've got something maybe with a, a decorative handle or it is a little bit more rounded it will probably still fit quite well in this box but like I said you can use it for other things as well but um, I really needed it for this one here once I wrap some tissue around that and then you just pull the ribbon through and it will so I've made the lid slightly bigger so that that ribbon can go through the sides and uh, you just tie it all together Finish it off with your little tag and it's all ready to go under the tree. So let me show you how to make it. So today I'm using the Almost Christmas paper pad. It's absolutely beautiful. You can see all the sparkle on there and I'm going to be using this one here with the robin and the garland. So I've already cut all of that out and I'll go through all of that in a moment. So first of all, I've already prepared that one. You'll want two pieces that are eight and a half by seven and a half. Okay. And along the eight and a half inch side, you want to score at half an inch and four inches. Then rotate it and you're going to score at four inches. Okay. So do that twice. So you're going to have two pieces. I'll do the cutting on that in a moment. And then for the lid, you'll want a piece that's eight and five eighths of an inch by seven and five eighths of an inch. And on all four sides, you just want to score at one and two inches. So one and two, rotate, one, two. And just do that on all of the sides. Whilst I've got my ruler here in the scoreboard, just so I can get these measurements, you also want two pieces that are three and a quarter by three and three quarters. So it's two pieces for the sides. And then for the front and back, you'll want two pieces that are four and a quarter by three and three quarters. You can see where I've stuck those down on those pieces there. You can do it once it's stuck together as well, but then you'll also want this piece for the lid. And this is four and three eighths of an inch by three and three eighths of an inch, because we've made the lid slightly larger to fit over the top of all of this. And now you just want to fold and burnish all of the score lines. Okay, so starting with this piece first, like I said, I've already done that one. So you've got this half inch tab on the left hand side, and then you've got the bottom here. You just want to cut up to the first score line. So you might have already stuck your pattern paper down, but you're just cutting up to that first score line. Okay, this piece here you can just remove completely, like so. And I'm just going to grab my snips and just trim the top and the bottom there okay now these side pieces so these these squares here these are your rectangles but these squares are actually your side tabs so you can just take a little wedge off of both of the corners and that will just tidy everything up when we go to fold it all together and you won't have anything hanging out the sides Okay, so now you'd want to stick down those pattern pieces if you haven't already. And then what you want to do is we're going to stick together these pieces. So you're just going to pop some glue down here. 
and just pop this one over the top and make sure you line up your base score lines. Okay, the top you can sort out if you need to, but the base score lines you want them to be perfectly lined up. Okay, and then if you flip it over and then just pop some glue on this half here and then just fold this whole half over and the whole thing will line up. Okay, and then choose what you want to be the front or the back because you'll have a join, at, you know, the, both the front or the back, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go with, I've got the three robins there and there's three robins there. In fact, I'm going to go for this side, I think, because, yeah, they're kind of a bit more spaced out. So I'm going to stick down the back one, first of all, and I'm just going to pop my glue all over that one. I'm going to pop one side and then the other side and then finally the last one and you should have everything line up nicely and then just turn it over you can go in there and just spread everything out and this is a great size box on its own so you don't have to put the mug in here okay so now we've got the box next we can do the lid so you would have just folded all of those score lines and burnished them so choose one of the long sides so. okay and then you just want to cut down all of the score lines to the second score line so you're going past the first one down to the second again down to the second okay then on each side you want to remove the two outer squares and again like so and then you want to remove just the top square like so and then take a little bit off of all of the sides so these ones these ones just the top there don't do anything with that piece and also this side because all of these are reinforcements they're all going to fold in and again on this side just a little bit there okay and then rotate it all the way around and then do the same on the other side okay so you should now have something like this next you want to stick it all together so i'm going to use my quick grab glue and i'm going to just pop my glue on the little square tab and you want to bring it under bring that one round so you're forming the corner of the lid make sure you get it nice and lined up and then go around to the next one put a little bit of glue on there and again bring that one over okay and just repeat that on the other two that's that done and then I'm going to go back to the cloud glue and add that to these pieces because that will just help strengthen the lid and you're just going to pop the glue on the inside I do mine all at the same time and then when you fold them in you can just go around and burnish them all like so and then fold them all in like so and then get your bone folder and you can just go in and just make sure that sticks down and whilst you do that it will just burnish the sides just to make them really smooth okay so now we've got our lid and then you just need to stick that piece on the top and then I've also gone ahead and cut these now these ones have this lovely bow detail and it's from the paper pad and it's the strips so you can just cut pieces out of them and I just found the one that would match this paper so you can see here you've got all the bows but you've got baubles there to match the bauble paper you've got the holly leaves you've got the music notes even the wood grain here they match all of the other papers so I've pulled those out and you'll want two pieces that are well they're all three quarters of an inch wide but two of them need to be four and three eighths and two need to be three and three eighths and they're going to go on the two sides and the front and the back. Okay, so my doorbell just went and then I got sidetracked and then I started again doing the rest and realised I hadn't hit record. So what you want to do now is make your holes. So you just need to, with a ruler, you want to measure, it's about two and a quarter 
in from both sides. And oh, this is on the long side, and then just hole punch. You can see there. And I just used this one here and just went in underneath, so you've got the room there. And just make sure you've got it as centered as possible, really. Then I've got this beautiful red velvet ribbon. I can't remember, I want to say it's from the range. I'm pretty sure it was, because I remember I brought tons of it there. So I had this like bin full of um, ribbons. So possibly, anyway, could be wrong. Okay, then you're going to pop your ribbon underneath your box like I've just done there. And you're going to come inside and then thread it back out. And because we've made it that little bit bigger, the ribbon has room to go underneath. And I mean, this is a thick ribbon anyway. And then with this one, you're just going to go again, come in from the inside. And that's what will give you that nice effect. And it just works really well with these papers with that red ribbon bow image and then the, you know, the ribbon that I'm using here. And then I'm just going to make sure I've got an even amount and then just tie a nice bow. I will make that look much nicer but I'm just going to just trim the ends there and I will seal those better in a moment. But now how gorgeous does that look? <laughs> I really really like it. So I'm just going to do my little tag. Okay so I've just heat embossed with a red tinsel embossing powder. Can you just see? There we go. And I've used this one here. This is Tag One by Simply Creative. These are only 99p. They're such good value for money and they're just really cute and it just works perfectly. I've used a cream card stock and you can see it matches. So I'm actually going to, yeah, I'm going to feed it through this one here before I tie it in a bow. I've already sealed the ends of the ribbon so they're not going to fray anymore. But now that's all ready for me to just write who it's for. Oh, actually I need to put the mug in there as well just to, um, well actually I'll be able to put the actual, the genuine one in here because I'm going to do it like this. So you won't be able to see, or the person that may look at this video won't be able to see what is on there, but you can see it fits in there perfectly. And then I'm just going to pop the lid over, pull the ribbon through and then pop the tag on. I may well pop some tissue around that as well. So I'll get some, I think I've got some red tissue somewhere actually. Need to work on that bow, but there we go. <laughs> it's all in there and I think it looks great. I hope you found this tutorial useful. The box doesn't have to be used just to hold a mug. It can, you know, you can put all sorts in here, but I'm really pleased that I'm definitely gonna put some tissue because I can feel it just moving just a little bit because there is a little bit of room in there. But uh, yeah, really pleased. So this one's almost ready to go under the tree. So thanks for watching and I'll be back again very soon with another tutorial. Bye.